been in regular contact with the Lucari, and they've recently unveiled a new starship designed for space exploration. They're eager to head out into the unknown, and they've asked us to give them a hand. Starfleet has decided to send you to assist them in their first voyage beyond their home system. This is an exciting time for the Lucari. Watch over them and help them to see the value of space exploration, and let them make discoveries and follow their sense of wonder. Just don't let them get in over their heads. Indeed. Now we're going to travel to the Lucari system in the, Al in the Alpha Quadrant and accompany them in exploring their systems in the edge of known space. <laughs> And where are we? Got the get a uh, and then some nice looking stuff and just and so we get so that is definitely one thing we're going to be looking at at later date, <laughs> probably. So anyway, let's get go on the uh, go to the uh, Alpha Quadrant and uh, visit find the Lucari. We've already had a carry system and then we're reading the starship instead of the opposite there. And pick, uh, mm, picking up come traffic, it sounds like Captain Kumarke is in the middle of a discussion with a friendly daemon. Help him take us to the carry ship. And USS Owen. My dear friend Kumarka, just think about how much I can help. I try not to think about you at all, Marjorie. Oh dear. If not me, consider my wealth of wasteful contacts. I thought I'd the last of you are That is to say, uh, we meet again. Damon Madron, what's for you? Our business is with the Lucario today. Oh, come now. I'm sure we can reach an agreement that is to everyone's liking. I'm prepared to offer you an exclusive, once in a lifetime, if it, if it, the surveyor, cut the channel. Hello, Carrie. Thank you. That insistent Ferengi has been trying to make new trade deals with us since he first visited our system. Oh, everything he tries to sell is either broken or worthless. No problem. You look well, Captain. Thank you. It's good to see you again, and under much better circumstances. You'll be happy to know that our star remains stable. We've not seen any Tholian ships since the incident, thankfully. Okay. The decision to explore was somewhat controversial, however. Many Lucari were... resistant to the notion. We settled this moon long ago, after we were forced to leave our dying homeworld of Kentar. It was a... difficult journey for us. Once we found our new home, no one was very excited about space travel. I, I could see why. Still. The exploration initiative passed. Considering my experience, my people have chosen me to command the LSS Concordium. It was an honor I proudly accepted. Our ship is ready to go, and you are. Okay, before we uh, go, can you tell me about me about your ship? While we have some catching up to do, we've engaged the best engineering minds of our world to modify this vessel. I'm quite proud. We've done a lot in a very short period of time. We've added some of your defensive technology to this ship, as well as some warp drive upgrades. The Concordium is now capable of sustaining a top speed of just over warp 4. Okay. Our collaboration with your engineers has been quite inspirational. We've started work on a starship of our own design. One of many to follow the Concordium to the stars. Indeed, and we'll find those, uh, those ships later. Our ship is ready to go, and you are. Let's proceed to our, your, our destination. For our maiden voyage, I've chosen a star that is close enough to be within reach, but still just outside the area of space that you've explored, and obviously one that we haven't visited yet. According to your star charts, it's a yellow-white star called 20 Draconis. I'm guessing prepare cars. This is an over. Believe me, the next evening will be on my terms. Eh. Uh. I don't think so. Um, so let's go to the uh, 20, 20 Draconis system.
left on the outskirts of the system, there's a large field of rocky debris and asteroids. We're picking up various metals and crystalline formations. Should we approach one of the larger asteroids and take some more readings? Yes, we'll head to one of the larger asteroids and scan it. And... Whilst the LSS Concordium is not a particularly well flyable ship, there are a couple of new carrier ships you could be able to get at some point. Okay, let's scan this uh, asteroid. Scanning in progress. Ooh. Readings coming in now. Large quantities of silicate, hematite, kefnium, iridium. Crystalline structures appear to be the result of deposits created under a heavy impact. Perhaps this asteroid was part of a larger one that broke up in a collision. Heading deeper into the field may yield more clues. Agreed, let's head deeper into the asteroid field. Sensors are picking up some movement on the far side of the asteroid. Not S simple orbiting debris either. Yeah, I can see it too. Ooh, Geckleys. Cosmosoans, they're beautiful. Do you have any information about them? We got Geckley, we're sending, sending you the files on them now. Intriguing. The Geckley communicate using radio waves and feed on dust particles and energy emissions. And, well, it seems an adjustment of our EM band is in order. I don't like the idea of the Concordium becoming a Geckley food source. We're adjusting our EM band down to 0 0.002 seconds as well. Oh. Adjusted our power systems. I'd like to gather more data on the Geckley before we move on. Any we suggestions? We tag them with suspicious data transmitters. An excellent idea. We'll be able to track their movements and learn more about their migratory patterns and feeding habits. We'll need to get close in order to attach the tag safely. We get close with it. The Geckley and attach the tag for mineral force. So we pick a. We put our lab. Pick this elder. I mean. Data's coming in from the Geckley. I'd like to expand the number of tagged subjects to optimize data collection. Let's get close enough to slip in with a pod and join them in their swimming. Alright, we'll fly the Gek into the Geckley pod and do them as they swim through space. And over there's our Geckley pod. I don't want to go too far. Oop. Oop. We've got to keep our flying. We're getting close up readings from all of the creatures. Yeah, we're flying with a pod. They're treating us like one of their own. They're trying to talk to us with their radio waves. Oops. Tricky to fly it like this. Especially when you. I'm gonna turn off this ability for the time being. Oof. Go for a bit of a speed to do on that this one. from here. This looks like a feeding ground for several Geckley pods. Let's go have a look. Uh, very well. Helm, take us to Geckley feeding grounds. Over there they are. And we're going to have to go a good distance away, so...
There are signs that several Gekli pods frequent this area. There's a lot of dust and particulate matter, but we can't see how the asteroids are getting broken down. I think there's something we're not seeing on the visible spectrum. Your ship has a stronger deflector than ours. Can you emit a particle wave? We could use that to illuminate things that might be happening in different spectra. Can you emit a multiple spectrum pat particle wave? And... Scanning in progress. Two, one. Oof. There's some kind of subspace shearing here. It's causing cosmic strings to snap off and break up the asteroids. That must be why the Gekli feed here. There's plenty of particulate matter for them to consume in the debris fields. I think we've collected some solid data here. We're ready to move on when you are. Let's see what lies ahead then. So let's do a little walk jump to the next area. That's a good way to begin. This comet is mostly ice and dust. There are indications that the cometary matter formed around a magnetic core. The other comets may be more interesting. Let's move to the other comets and study them closely. Agreed, let's check the remaining comets. signs of magnetic radioactive matter. This comet may have seen some interesting particle fields in its wandering. Mentica must help draw in material that forms its cor the corner. So let's investigate this second one. There we Complete. Holding the comet let us get some detailed readings about its emissions. Based on the structure of its silicate crystals, it's been in a pattern. It picks up energy from its trip near the star, then loses that energy as it loops past the planets. It's like ice melting and refreezing, but it seems to lose a large quantity of energy all at once near here. I'm not sure why. The radioactivity should be steady. Perhaps it's up from the engine. Let's keep looking. Hmm. These comets seem to have a long orbit that coincides with the orbit of a Class A planet nearby. I'd like to launch a probe and see if the cometary movements have had any impact on the planet. Yeah, let's launch the probe and collect more detailed readings. And let's launch our probe. There it goes. Let's go take a closer look at those life bombs. Okay. 
this is the planet. Planet is geothermal in nature. Its surface is partially molten. Definitely be suited if we're going down there, but I don't think we need to go down there today. No life forms detected planet side. Then again, it is rather warm down there. Indeed. Okay. I think the problems are better down there than we are. And oh, oh, hello. There they are. Magnificent, aren't they? Indeed. With, I think our logs have got some of the things about these. Now let's get close. I mean, I have no idea where that point is, so. The creatures are luminescent ovoids? I'm not sure how to describe them. They remind me of an aquatic life form native to Lucari Prime. There are little ones huddling close to the planet's atmosphere. They must use the heat and the planet's electrical discharges to survive. The type of Oridian we seen you fast now. Interesting. These life forms were encountered by the USS Enterprise D on Deneb 4, some place called Far Point Station. They haven't been seen anywhere else since. He shouldn't harm them or they're young. Let's transmit a greeting, then be on our way. Right, we'll close and transmit a greeting to the uh, Cosmonoans. Well, that's just written. Scanning in progress. The color display must be a form of communication. I didn't realize that life forms could exist in this fashion, living off the heat of planets, feeding on the particles in space, absorbing radiation from the cosmos. There's so much to see. Let's head to the next planet in the system and see what's there. Indeed, let's let's go. Devoid of any organic material, and yet it has a breathable atmosphere and lies well within the system's habitable zone. Most curious. Agreed. I think a close look is in order, Captain. I'm picking up residual levels of radiation. Oh my! I believe I know what happened to this world. Some kind of proto matter wave happened here. Proto matter, to, but that's incre incredibly dangerous and unstable. Not if you know how to resolve the chaotic turbulence with a Tarfine reduction. Hmm. This was a recent event. Some kind of protomatter incident happened, and it wiped out all life on the planet. I think we should send an away team down to learn more. We'll, we'll boom down and see what's happening. Let's boom down. Oh, not sure I'll ever get used to transporters. Let's see. Initial scans suggest this area used to be inhabited, but I can't find a single trace of organic matter. None. I see some carvings on those canyon walls. Let's take a look. And... Here we go, and ooh. The walls of this canyon were worked by tools. I'm sure of it. Sentient life forms lived here until the proto matter detonation. This pillar here, it seems to be a sign pointing to that canyon. Perhaps a pathway there leads to a settlement of some kind. I'm reading metallic objects there as well. Shall we take a look? Yes, let's follow the path through the canyon. And. Look, there's some kind of large structure further down the canyon. Yeah, I mean. Look at the size of that plaza. Did. These people must have had quite a developed culture. Let's take some readings up there. Uh, that's some the up here. This looks like a town square or ceremonial center of some kind. I see some murals on the far side of the square over there by that arch. I'd like to examine them. They might tell us more about this place. Great, let's summon the nearby murals. So, okay, we have uh, several men presenting eggs of some sort. 
These murals depict people bringing some objects to this place. Crystals or gems, I believe? They built their settlement around this site. I believe it was a place of great significance to them. The next mural may hold more clues for us. Let's have a look. Right, let's check out the next mural. And it's up here. And looks like looks like here. This mural depicts the construction of this large structure. I suspect it was a temple or a place of contemplation for the people. The crystals were revered by the locals. Perhaps even worshipped by them. We'd better have a look at the next mural, don't you think? Yes, let's examine the next mural. So... The crystals depicted in this mural appear to be growing for some reason. I wonder if this is a symbolic or literal representation of events. Perhaps the structure needed to be modified to hold the volume of crystals they collected over the years. Crystal may have grown through natural winds as well. Quite the enigma we found here. I suspect there's more to be found inside. Getting there will be a challenge, however. According to my scans, these pillars are connected to some kind of massive mechanical structure. Probably the peak of technology for these people. I believe it's some kind of opening mechanism for the structure's door. Can we open it by putting some kind of device out using our tricorders? We could probably force it open, but that could damage the structure. And too much force could even collapse it entirely. I suggest we create a holographic forensic reconstruction. Holographic recreation of local life? Yes, it would be based on analysis of things like footprints, wear patterns, and local construction. We can learn what people did here, how they went about their lives, and how they made the device work. We'd be watching a replay of history, roughly speaking. Let's start by gathering information from relics and leftover traces of the people who once lived here. Let's look at tools, footprints, and anything else that tells more about them. So. Let's see, we've got pot. These artifacts were used with opposable thumbs and indicate a likely hand span of 22 centimeters. Listen to weird. Based on these footprints, these people had a stride that places them at about 1.6 meters on average. Not uh, too tall. Mm. Oh. The wear patterns here show us that people leaned against here frequently. This was a meeting and gathering area. Him. Strange. These relics should be covered with dust and sand, worn away by time and wind. But they're all uncovered. No organic matter left and everything left behind in its place. Frozen in time, like... These people died very recently. Yes. The evidence seems clear. The proto-matter detonation happened only weeks, perhaps even days ago. We're going to need to make an accurate simulation to continue our studies here. I suggest using modified pattern enhancers to do this. Great, we'll set up the modified enhancers now. So, we have... Enhancers online. The signal is strong and clear. There's number two. Two down, two to go. And is there third? That's three. One more and we'll be ready. And the final one, I'm going to jump it in. That's the last one. All enhancers online and standing by. All right. The enhancers should give us a pretty good image range. Your tricorder can then act as the center of the network control for the enhancers. I can tie in my data to your tricorder whenever you're ready. Get a little close to the center of the square so we can see what happens. All right, let's get close to the plaza and center and we can probably win. So we'll stand up here. Yeah, oh, okay, this fellow working to here. Pull in something here and down below. 
Note that the alien is using the pillars in a specific order. Yeah. Then one, but one. Walk it across. They're making the murals match up on each pillar. Yeah, that's well, easily be the case. And Going back, going in the temple. Looks like some kind of functionary, priest or bureaucrat, I think, would unlock the door by turning the murals on the pillars. The top mural on each pillar seems to be locked in place for reference. We should follow the order they used on the pillar murals. If we can turn them correctly, I believe we'll unlock the door. So the mills on the pills in the proper order, a lot of the dark got it. So, if we bit of this this one, so we turn the middle mill first. And that's looking well, look right, so that's. Can you hear that? That's the first pillar set in place. And. That doesn't look right. That looks better. That's two pillars set into place. And if we already went across and went to this one, so we're middle. 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 And bottom. Bottom. And the final bottom one. Three pillars are locked in now. Now this one looks like it's going to be an egg shift, so we'll... Middle. Middle. King, well done! Shall we see what secrets this building holds? Yep. I think I see another mural inside the doorway. We should take a look at it. Yes, I really do think we should go inside and take a look at the next mural, because that, that badge, that looks like one of our come badges. And really, I'm not wearing one. Never is in, in and stuff, but Isn't that the symbol of your Starfleet? How did it get here? How could it be in a temple of people who don't even have electricity, much less space travel? This is getting stranger by the minute. We should search the temple for more murals. Indeed. Let's look for more murals in here. And this is like a severe case of... Uh, Prime directive breaking. Oh, that's even worse. Those people in the picture, they don't look like the others. They're from Starfleet, they're from the 23rd century, I will. Hey, they're in there. So I only just saw the uh, Enterprise getting, the, getting these outfits. So. What happened here? If Starfleet officers contacted this civilization in the past, why wouldn't you have a record of it? We should head deeper into the temple and continue our search. Affirmative. We need to have to search answers deeper in the temple. So. I think the panel on the wall here can be pushed to open something. Yeah. So, push. Those inner doors across from the panel are opening. Oh. What is all of this? So 
Let's have a good look. According to my tricorder, we've reached ground zero. This is where someone detonated the protomatter bomb. From here, a self-propagating cascade of proto-energy radiated outward in all directions, washing over the entire planet. Could this be the failed terraforming project? Doubtful. I believe what did this was built specifically as a weapon. There's no new ecosystem. All life was eliminated. I'm picking up a residual energy signature here. Take a look. 16 centimeter wavelength with a slight kaon leak. I've seen this before. It's a byproduct of Zenkethi technology. Zenkethi? Here? So we found a delicate space station in orbit around this planet. Some powder and covered in decades of dust made it out of the pinpoint in this asteroid run. Unfortunately, we aren't the only ones to find it. Several starships in the area wide the system and laying claim to this system. Uh, what should we do? Give me a site search transport direct to the station. Keep the Lakao ship protected. Get inside the transport. <laughs> We're on the OK7 Federation Deep Space Sessions. How'd he get out here? What happened to him? It's back out of on the wall. Let's see if it's anything recognizable. So... The K7s were pretty new when we were... Uh, when we were set... When we, were, when we left, so... The... space K K13... That station was lost in time over 100 years ago. Lost in space and uh, it's time and space. K13 was in the beta quadrant before. You're a trespassing. I'm claiming this station and salvage, along with everything in it. A little piece of history like this will be quite the vacation site. Experience life on the final frontier at Modron's K13. But I digress. Unless you're here to discuss leasing opportunities, I suggest you beam off my station. It's not your station yet. I think I'll take a look around. Careful. This old beauty needs some serious repairs. It'd be a shame if something happened to you, or the active stasis pause by men found on board. Then I like to see nothing ha like that happens. They went skulls out. Fair warning. My Gnostic guards aren't very fond of intruders. I thought they might. So. Oh, yeah. I'd be happy to tell the boss. Consider their living contents of promotional bonus. So by the scripture field. The log files of this computer as well, so we show the last entry. Let's hear it. Chief Engineer's Log. Supplemental. By my account, we've been hurled back in time to the 16th century. To make matters worse, we're a very long way from the den of the system. None of our shuttles are warp capable. And even if we could get to Earth, we'd be in the wrong time. In short, we're stuck. There's nothing to do now but wait and try to conjure up a way to get back to the right time. Indeed. Computers lost the ability to link in with the main computer. But the security field's down and we get to the other lab. From there we can get to the main computer and let the notes out. I'll keep 
them from the fields, bringing fields online and are oh, using the station to stop us. So let's but see if we can find the other lab. Oh dear. That uh, that table for the dirt that was not pretty good. And let's double check with the civil log. Chief Engineer's log, March eighteenth, fifteen seventy. Had a discussion this morning with security about our Klingon prisoners in the brig. We can't just leave them locked up, or execute them, or exile them on the planet below. Setting them free isn't a popular notion either. We're still looking for options, but I think the stasis pods we have in medical will come in handy real soon. Indeed. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Hello, guys. Century uh, staff at uniform with a couple of uh, uniforms. Ah, well, we need to set up this computer to get this look at the main computer. Look at it, look at the Nashka's out the main computer. I keep them from taking over any more services. Any good work, anyway. More information. There's another log entry, Admiral. Play it. Chief Engineer's Log, April 17th, 1570. Today we visited the planet we're calling Draconis 3 to collect supplies. The good news, there's a humanoid civilization down there. The bad news, a potential Prime Directive violation. Our landing party was seen beaming in by some of the locals. We're hoping that doesn't impact their culture in any way. One thing's for sure, they can't help us go home. Their tech level is Bronze Age at best. Okay. I'm on the station sold and battle damage. That most security systems don't work anymore. If we go to Central Lab, we can lock, lock it down and keep the of from beginning anyone else over. I know. Let's go to the, go to the Central Lab station. Well, first. Let's check out supplemental logs. Uh. Chief Engineer's Log, August 6th, 1570. The Warp Booster Sled Project is officially a bust. When we tried to spin up the coils, we couldn't get a stable warp field. Yashvi and Arlington managed to shut it down and stop a breach, but the shuttle's impulse drive is shot. I hate giving up, but we just don't have the parts we need to make it work. So, definitely, so they're basically stuck here. So, you two. Okay. So, let's move to the end. Okay. Beautiful, I'll get to you. Yeah. 
So let's set. Uh, we got X power from the. Exploring power coming up. Activating low levering scatter refill that prevents. Let's just bring over it. In reinforcements. Excellent. Anything else? I found one of the uh, la last century logs here. Afraid it's. Uh, the rest of the computer's memory is heavily corrupted. Put it on screen. Chief Engineer's Log, July 26th. Most of us went into stasis this morning. There weren't enough pods for everyone. Three of us had to stay awake. We drew lots, and Tavon, Sheridan, and I were the lucky winners. Since we're out of options, we've decided to go native and live out our lives under Conus 3. Hopefully, one day our records will be found, and the people of Station K-13 Acquisition 431. When the shooting starts, let the mercenaries handle it. Handle this, Captain! <sighs> the crime is trespassing! The sentence is down! Oof. One final log. One second final log. Chief Engineer's log, July 9th, 1571. It's decided. Most of us are going into cryo sleep. Those who stay awake, well, there's the rub. Going to live on a remote part of the planet below is likely, despite the prime directive issues. Staying here isn't viable. When the supplies are gone and the remaining power is in the stasis pods, Anyone left is a goner. This station will be there too. And taking out supplements, <laughs> oh dear. Uh, let's return to the ship. And we need just back as was on the back back on the ship. Madrin is now scanalized uh moving to intercept it was intercept us. So let's be up. on my station. I'll just add their fees to your tab. I do hope you're good for it. Otherwise, I might have to take possession of that pretty ship of yours. Come to think of it, I'll be taking your ship anyway. Whether you're alive or not when I do, is up to you. You're looking to trade, Damon. I don't think you'll like the results. And Something like this, Captain. Dangerous, but also filled with discovery. Indeed. I'd say our first flight was a success. Now we need to share our discoveries with everyone back home. I hope today's events will convince my people of the continued need to explore and to be part of the galactic community. With luck, we'll do this again sometime, and soon. On behalf of the Lucari people, thank you. You're welcome, Captain. It's Safe travels. Alright. Uh. 
okay. I said this events are better described as harem. Zenkefi has been quiet for years, but now they're using protomatter bombs and committing genocide. Uh, that was just a problem of K-13. How did he even get here? I've put in t into calling to your fleet, fleet to send repair teams. The fleet can take command of the, this place of history. I'll send some reports and we can depart on our orders. Yeah, let's go. I'm happy to hear the Lucari handled their first experience with space exploration well. There's talk of their desire to join the Federation, and from what I'm seeing, they'd be fine members. The mystery of Station K-13 has been solved, although the past violation of the Prime Directive by some of its personnel is a concern. Hopefully the crew preserved in stasis pods will be able to shed a little more light on that situation. Finally, this news of a Zenkethi protomatter weapon is disturbing. I'll be looking into it from all angles, diplomatic and military in particular. We've fought a war with them before, and I'd prefer avoiding another now. Indeed. Now, as usual, we get the experience points and expertise in Delifium one. And now, the we get the get one of the best disruptor sets in the game, purely because you get get disrupt get free disrupt consoles, free disrupt items that are very nice to have, and the Noshkin a Noshkin ground weapon. And of course, if you really just need disrupt to boost up your disruptor, you can always pick up the disrupt induction car. So, this is got some Disruptor Beam Array is a, is a pretty, pretty much a standard Beam Array, except for the fact that it gives a hold for 5 seconds, so, and and, and it adds a 5 second bonus to the set, which is the be as a 2 set bonus, so. Then there is the console which improves our grain expertise which uh, transfer power weight which is very nice to have and plus 20 disruptor damage which is has been decent and then we've got the Noshkin energy just torpedo launcher and it does it does it's okay da damage but uses the instead of using kinetic you, you use disruptor and disruptor energy disruptor consoles to boost the power, so very nice to have. And including, and that does include the this uh, siphon capacitor. So you it, uh, quite a few. If you want to just free disruptor build, picking up this set is pretty decent. And the Noshkin energy lance is a nice ground weapon, which it's a bit of which you might have seen the enemy at some of the. Enemies in this game, like this episode was used before, so we're picking the energy lines purely because I'm not going to be winning disruptor build on this, this character for a long time. And that, believe it or not, is it for the time being.